In this video, I'd like to discuss graphing parametric equations in GeoGebra. So parametric equations give us a wonderful tool for showing how objects move through time. Typically, when we are dealing with graphing algebraic equations, we get this curve. So let me do something right here. Let's say I want to graph x squared plus y, y squared equals 9. Okay, x squared plus y squared equals 9. Now we know from our work in algebra that the graph of this equation will be a circle. Okay, so let's imagine that this is like a, a track somewhere, okay? A track in a park. You've got a circular track, and its radius is three miles. That's a, uh, that's a pretty big park, but whatever. Okay, so that's the path. Now, there are plenty of ways you could move along this path. You could start up here at the 12 o'clock position and go around in the clockwise direction. You could start here at the 3 o'clock position and go in the counterclockwise direction. You could move fast, you could move slow. So how can we describe an object moving on this path? Okay, well, it's not that hard. What we're going to do is we are going to give two functions. We're going to have one function that tells you the x-coordinate of the object, and we're going to have another function that tells you the y-coordinate. That's what all parametric equations really are. Okay, so let me go and go to the Tools menu. Nope. Let me go to the Tools menu over here and bring in a slider. Okay, I'll put it over here. Okay, so a slider is going to be a way to put in a variable into GeoGebra, and that val variable will take on values in the interval that we specify. Okay, so I'm going to call it T. The default name was A, but I'll call it T for time. And let's have our slider go from 0 to oh, 6.28 in increments of, oh, I don't know, 0 0.1. Okay, so... GeoGebra puts that little slider in here, and you can see you can grab it and move the value of t to various uh, different places. Now, of course, right now nothing is happening when we slide this around because we haven't connected this variable t to anything in our graph. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to define a point a, a equals, and we'll make it 3 cosine t, that's our x-coordinate function, and then 3 sine t, that'll be our y-coordinate function. All right, so we can see right here that when t equals 0, the x-coordinate function is 3 and the y-coordinate function is 0, so our point is at 3 comma 0. And as t varies, the position of a changes. All right, and we can see precisely how it's changing as we drag t to the different values that I specified in the slider. Okay, so we have that way of describing a point moving along this path. And in this particular example, the point starts in the 3 o'clock position and goes in the counterclockwise direction. All right. So... That's what we really need. That's what we really mean when we're saying parametric equations. Okay, we're talking about if we're talking about motion in the plane, we have two functions. One function that gives you the x coordinate, another function that gives you the y coordinate. They're both functions of usually a variable t. And as t changes, the functions will tell us how the position of the object is changing. So really great for showing the motion of an object. 
Let me switch over to the document camera one sec. Uh, I pop back in the picture here. Okay, so what I want to do here is to understand why why the coordinate functions that we use lie on that circle. Okay, so we had 3 cosine t, 3 sine t. All right, so I want you to notice something here. I want you to notice that, of course, if I take this thing, and I take this thing, take my two coordinate functions and I square them, let me look at what I get. Okay, so I have to square both of the factors. So I have 3 cosine squared t plus, or sorry, not 3, it's 3 squared, 9 cosine squared t plus 9 sine squared t. I can factor out my 9 cosine squared t plus sine squared t. And we know our trigonometry. We know from the Pythagorean identity that cosine squared t plus sine squared t equals 1, so we're just left with this 9. So thus, if x is equal to 3 cosine t and y is equal to 3 sine t, then x squared plus y squared equals 9. Okay, so these coordinate functions fit into this algebraic equation. Right? So the graph of these parametric equations has to be on the graph of this algebraic equation. Okay, so you can look at your parametric equations and then you can figure out what the graph is going to look like based on what algebraic equations those guys fit into. And typically, if your parametric equations involve cosine and sine, it's going to be one of these conic sections like this. It'll be a circle, it'll be an ellipse, something like that. Depends on, depends on what you have. Okay, let's change it up just a little bit here. Okay, let's try this. Let's try to describe the graph of, and let me change things up. Let's do x equals, oh, how about 3 sine t plus 4, and y equals 5 cosine t minus 1. Okay, so I'm still seeing my sines and cosines, okay, but notice these, these are different, right? So if I just squared these, well, I'd get a whole bunch of junk because I'd be squaring two terms, okay? So I don't want to do that. I want to make it so that it's easy to do the squaring. Okay, so let me try this. What if I did x minus 4? and then squared it. If I did x minus 4, that gives me 9 sine squared t. And what if I did like y plus 1 squared? That would give me 25 cosine squared t. So if I did like x minus 4 quantity squared and then divided by 9, that would just give me sine squared. And then if I did y plus 1 squared over 25, that would give me cosine squared. So this is going to give me sine squared. t in that second term here, that's going to give me cosine squared t. So that gives me a 1. Okay. Now I want you to think back to your, to your high school algebra class here. Think of an equation like this. It 
if I looked at this equation, if I had x squared over 9 plus y squared over 25, if that were equal to 1, that is an ellipse. Okay, that would be an ellipse. And the way I remember it, let me just very briefly draw or sketch the graph by hand here. Okay, y can be as big as 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down there. x is living between negative 3 and positive 3. So we get this kind of shape right here. Kind of be an oval shape, kind of vertical, vertically oriented here. And that would be our graph. And this would just shift four units to the right and one unit down. Okay, because think back to your algebra once again. If you have a graph, and you know what that graph is looking like here, well, the only difference is we replace x with x minus 4. So that's going to give us a horizontal shift. We replaced y with y plus 1. That's going to give us a vertical shift. Okay, so that would be our graph. We would have an ellipse. Um, in fact, let me go and check with GeoGebra right here. We'll bring this back. I'm going to hide that, and I'm going to hide that. And I'll do, uh, do a new input here. Might need to zoom out just a little bit to, to get the picture I really want to see. Okay, let me do uh, just the major grid lines, and that's it. Uh, the y-axis, give me tick mark, or the x-axis, tick marks every one unit. Y-axis, tick marks every one unit, clean up my picture a little bit, and if we go back and look at my coordinate functions, and just to remind you, it was this right here, these were my coordinate functions, okay, we'll put those in, my point B, okay, so I had 3 sine t plus 4, that was my x-coordinate, and my y-coordinate was 5 cosine t minus 1, okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and um, show the trace on my point B. Okay, so remember, that's like inking up the point B. Okay, notice right here we got a nice little ellipse going right there. It shifted over from that version that I graphed before, like we said, right? If you look back at what I graphed right here, this thing, this is the graph of x squared over 9 plus y squared over 25 equals 1. That's an ellipse right here, and ours would be, what did I say, moved to the right four units, and then down one. And look at what we're getting. Okay, so we're moved to the right four units, and down one. If I were to graph this curve here, if I were to do x minus four quantity squared, whole thing over nine, plus y plus 1 quantity squared, whole thing over 25, and that was equal to 1. If I were to graph that equation, look at that ellipse, it gives me right there. And we can see that our point B is traveling on that ellipse. And that point B has to travel on that ellipse because the coordinate functions that we have right over here, they fit into the algebraic equation for that ellipse. Okay, so GeoGebra gives us a great way to, to visualize how the graph of a parametric uh, set of parametric equations is going to look, but of course we also have the algebra working in the background.